On today's show, I will be chatting about a couple of knits in progress, a couple of finished spins, as well as a weaving project almost finished. <laughs> everyone, I'm Marina and this is Pineapple Knits. This is my channel dedicated to knitting, spinning, and weaving. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn and you can connect with me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thanks so much for joining me again this week. I hope everything is going so well where you are. I'm coming to you today from coastal South Carolina where it is so beautiful and sunny and cold. <laughs> it's the beginning of February, so that's to be expected. And cold is relative. I know it's all relative, but we have had ice on the ground for two nights in a row. So it has been cold, cold, cold. <laughs> because it is so cold, I am definitely burning my royal palm candle. It is so deliciously summery and Oh, it's, it's so reminiscent of summer and every time I light it and smell it, it reminds me of summer. It makes me so happy. So that is a great scent for summer and I have some of those in my shop right now. And I am wearing this gorgeous cabled sweater. I cannot even tell you how much I love it. <laughs> This is the Coastal Pullover by Hannah Fedick, and I knit it out of my worsted weight baby alpaca and merino yarn. I love this yarn so much. It is so warm and it has an all over cable pattern. And so it's just, it wasn't difficult at all. The cables are very simple to repeat. I have a project page on Ravelry. I'll link it below in case you're interested in checking it out. I do recommend sizing a size up if you're going to knit it just because I think with the cables, it kind of shrinks in a little bit, but it's so warm. I really, really love it. So it's perfect on these super cold days. I also offer this yarn as a sweater quantity pre-order on my site. So I'll link that as well but behind me you can also see that i have my vitamin c advent calendar woven shawl and that's one of the projects that i wove up from my vitamin c advent calendar from last year i have had so many messages from y'all asking when are you going to sell your advent calendars this year and I, it's in the works for 2021 and I will be having pre-orders coming in April. So keep an eye out for that. I'm so excited planning it. It's, it's just so much fun. I love it. This year's theme is going to be awesome. Before I begin, I want to thank you all for your kind comments and your well wishes for my 100th episode, which was uh, last the last episode. And I've drawn a winner for the giveaway. I'll put all the info down below and you can contact me if this is you. You can contact me via my contact button on my website at pineappleyarn.com or you can connect with me directly at my email, which is pineappleyarn at gmail.com. So congratulations, that's so exciting. And if you could provide me your mailing address, that would be so awesome. And I cannot wait to send out the curated box that I created, especially for this 100th episode. So like I said, it's been very cold here and I have been knitting up a storm. I have been knitting my sun sweater and I've been knitting a new cast on as well. So let's start with my sun sweater because you have seen part of that. And yeah, I'll show you how much I've done. Do you ever have project bags where you finish a project, you begin another one and you still have all the leftover yarn from the last project in your project bag? I do it all the time. <laughs> and it's super frustrating because not only am I knitting a sweater right now, it's just a child size sweater, so it shouldn't be that big, but it has multiple skeins of yarn. And so not only do I have a sweater, but I have so many other, oh my goodness, I have so many other skeins of yarn in here. I have these from my slip stravaganza. I have, oh gosh, I have probably 10 cakes of yarn in here. 
It's insane. Anyway, <laughs> here is this gorgeous, it's not gorgeous, it's handsome. It's for my little boy. It is Strange Brew by Tin Can Knits and I am knitting it from just a bunch of leftover yarn that I had in my stash. So isn't that just so cute? Strange Brew is a color work recipe of sorts from Tin Can Knits. And it's really fun if you wanna play around with your knitting a little more, if you've done color work and maybe just wanna try your hand at some designing. And it's, it really is great. So the last time I think that we talked, I had done the yoke, maybe just done the yoke. And so here's where I'm at right now. And what I did is I finished the yoke and then use the same motif at the neck down at the hem just to kind of tie in those colors. And so that's where I'm at at this point. And I've also started on the sleeve. And the reason I didn't go any further is because honestly, the sleeve looked really tiny and uh, my son wouldn't try the sweater on. <laughs> And so my five-year-old daughter tried it on and of course she loved it and wanted it, um, but it fit her and she's not huge. And so I, I know this will fit him. I know based on that, that this will fit him and it'll be big right now and it will fit great next year, which is perfect. So this is the two to four years size, which I think is the, I think it's the fourth size if I'm remembering correctly. This has the Strange Brew pattern has everywhere from, I think, either newborn or zero to three months or zero to six months, all the way to adult sizes. So yeah, so far so good. I'm using, like I said, leftover yarn from my stash. Several of these I dyed on a um, DK weight merino base. And then this is, I believe, Cascade 220 from my stash, but I believe it was colorway or it was color 1985 and it was called duck egg green, maybe. As always, I'll put all of my info down below in case you're interested, but I think so far this is turning out really cute. I hope that I have enough for the rest of the sleeves since this is the first sleeve. I feel like I do, uh, but who knows? This is actually going super quickly. I really haven't worked on this too much, but so far it's worked out really cute and um, it's been a really fun knit. One of my goals that I have talked about for 2021 is to knit everyone in my family a sweater. And since there are seven of us in this house, <laughs> I've got my work cut out for me. <laughs> so good thing most of them are small because it will make it a little easier. I should also mention what I'm drinking today. This is a wonderful tea from Stash. I love Stash tea. It's easy to find. I don't live in a, I live in kind of a rural area and there's just not a lot of stores here. <laughs> so I can order this online, but um, this is stash tea. It's called decaf chocolate hazelnut, and it is an amazing tea. It is so good, and I love it so much that I'm including it in all of your orders that I will have in the next few weeks. But it, it really does smell like chocolate. It's so good, and I always add a little bit of stevia to my tea, and so it really sweetens it up and brings that flavor out. It's so, so good. All right, moving on to my next knitting project. I had talked to you about a swatch I did, and I still have it right here. This was from one of my sun clubs from 2020, and I paired it with a mohair silk, a lace weight mohair silk from my, both are from my shop, and this was in this color, actually. It's in a coral conch color and it just adds a really, really beautiful, warm glow to it. And so I just jumped right in and casted on the Novice Cardigan from Petite Knit. 
and I'll show both of these again. Again, with the project bag, I have multiple, multiple skeins of yarn in here. This is ridiculous. <laughs> but these are the colors I'm using. They're so pretty together. I love them so much. And this sweater pattern is awesome so far. This is the first petite knit pattern I've ever knit. I don't know why. It's a great pattern. And she has such cute designs. And so I'm definitely going to knit more patterns. But here it is so far. I'm not doing anything special at all. I am not alternating skeins. Um, I've used one full skein up so far. I'm still on my first um, No Way Mohair Silk skein, but um, I did have to move on to my second skein of my um, Lani DK. And I love this so far. I love it so much. I think it's so, so pretty. And so I know you're think you might be thinking, wait, I thought you were knitting a cardigan. And I am, however, <laughs> I decided after I had cast on this collar, I'm sure maybe you can see it, maybe you can see it in the back better. I decided why would I purl this all the way? Why not just steak it because, yeah, why not? Why not just cut into your knitting? No big deal. And so that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I have, I have knit the collar and then I have added um, I did a cable cast on when I got to the end of the collar and I'm going to, I, ca I cable cast on about eight stitches here. And so I'm just going to, uh, when I get all the way done with this, I will probably do the same rib on the bottom. I haven't really thought this out. I always kind of just jump into things and figure it out but I think I am going to do the bottom. And then what I will do is probably before I do the sleeves, I will pick up along each side of the middle and do the band. And um, I may stitch the stitches, like machine stitch, or I may hand stitch. Because this is such a chunky knit, I haven't really decided how I'm going to keep the stitches from unraveling. I don't know, we'll just see. And I'm sure whatever I, whatever I pick will work. I've done this before. I actually steaked my, I think it was my throwback cardigan and it worked out great. It was not a super, or it was a super wash and it still worked out great. And I can't remember if I machine stitched it or if I crocheted it, I don't remember, but it worked out great. And um, so I'll just, f when I get down to the actual steaking, I will figure it out and I will let you know. <laughs> but yeah, so far this has been such a cute, cute knit. I'm so excited that I cast this on, that I am that I dyed up a sweater quantity for myself. I really am happy about that. And I wanna say this is maybe from last September's Sun Club. So yeah, it's turned out so, so cute. I just, I can see wearing this with like some black jeans or really just whatever. And it, you know, in my ultimate goals, I would love to wear this for Valentine's Day because this is so cute. But eh, I'd have to knit a lot and I don't know uh, if I have enough time to actually get a sweater finished, but we'll see how it goes. But yeah, this has been really, really fun so far. And um, one thing I was thinking too, there's just all these things that I'm thinking. I love this texture so much in the sweater. I think it would be really fun to take this pattern and instead of knitting this neck band, maybe doing, um, I don't know, maybe just casting on and knitting the neck. And instead of adding eight stitches, maybe just add four and knit a regular sweater, maybe do an I-cord cast off and yeah, I think it would be really pretty on this to replace 
the rib with maybe just an I cord. Just some thoughts maybe in the future and we'll see how I like this fabric because honestly when uh, the humidity hits here, even if it does get a little cooler, I do not find mohair comfortable at all. The only reason I'm doing this is because my daughter really wants a sweater with this texture and so I will definitely be <laughs> knitting something like this for her but in different colors down the line and I am I, it's been a cold winter and so I really want to get more sweaters in my wardrobe so this is the novice cardigan super happy with it and I'm just gonna keep knitting on it it's been such a fun knit I am briefly going to go through all of these spinning projects <laughs> that I finished I showed them on the last episode, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on them, but I did wash them and they did plump up some. So I'm just going to show you a close up really quickly of them and just in case you're interested. And um, yeah, I haven't started any other new spinning projects, but just wanted to give you an update on these. So this is my beautiful beautiful Cordale. I had spun this as a three ply because I thought, oh, this would make beautiful socks, but alas, it is not, not thin enough for socks. So I'll have to do something else with it. It's still super beautiful, but um, with all three of these spins, I'll give you more info uh, down below in case you're interested in finding the fiber or interested in the spinning technique I used. But, oh gosh, I just love these colors. So gorgeous. Love it. This one turned out so pretty. This was a beautiful merino and camel and viscose tweed blend. I think it's called Pumpkin Spice from Paradise Fibers. The last one was also from Paradise Fibers. And I think they were both, maybe one was September and one was October uh, from their Fiber of the Month Club. And oh my goodness, this was such a fun spin. I spun this one long draw with a kind of a gentle two ply and I think it turned out so gorgeous. I love it. It's kind of a bulky, uh, like a worsted to a bulky weight. So, so light and airy though. It turned out beautiful. This light and bright colorway, oh, it's just so gorgeous. This is called Sea Life. This is a fiber I actually have in the shop right now, and it is a super wash merino. And I did a two ply on it. And I was super, if you remember from last week, you'll remember that I said that I was super happy about the consistency of the spin. And while it did plump up some, When I washed it, still turned out really consistent, so I was happy with it. So that is sea life, beautiful. All right, on to knit or on to weaving. I had uh, warped my loom with a, I think it was a DK weight yarn and. If I have a photo, I'll pop a photo in. And it was just, um, I just thought it would work really great with this yarn. This yarn I had prepped from a fiber that I had dyed, I was going to put in the shop and it was a, frankly, a miserable failure. <laughs> it had flax in it, which I thought was really, really fun. It was kind of like a, I was a merino and flax blend. There might have been another fiber in there as well. And it was such a horrible, horrible failure. Um, the fiber was usable, but it just didn't look good. The um, It wasn't blended really well. And so the flax, because it has such a long staple length and because the, the fiber, you know, flax is such a different fiber than merino. Oh, it just, the, the, combed top itself looked terrible after I dyed it. So what I did is I took some of that fiber and um, made it into Rolex on my blending board. Uh, 
and I had just decided that I was going to weave up some pillows. So this has been a long time in progress. <laughs> I've had the yarn done for quite a while and just finished weaving. So this is my finished weave. <laughs> It looks like a giant blanket with fringe and it's really not, it's just folded up. This is what I ended up with. It's also slightly sparkly, which is fun. I can't tell you how much I love this fabric. I'm gonna give you a close up because there's a lot of color nuances in it that you just can't see from far away. It's beautiful. So it's very wrinkly. I just, um, I actually washed it in my washing machine on I don't know if I did a delicate cycle or just kind of gentle on cold water or no, it was warm. I think it might've been warm and then popped it in the dryer for a little bit. But as you can see, it has like all of those little stripes and color nuances. It's so gorgeous. There's even like little on this side, there's even like a little bit of neon like right here. Oh, so pretty. You can see it just has a really great texture. And of course you can see how wrinkly it is, but it is going to be beautiful once I iron that out. I'm just going to take a steam iron. My iron has a great steam setting and I just kind of hover it over the fabric a little bit and just let it steam out. And it just kind of melts away all those wrinkles. So what I did is I just did a little bit of waste yarn on the bottom and then just wove and wove and wove. And I think I warped to, I warped to fit the pillows and the pillows are 24 inches across. So this might be 26 inches across. I don't remember the exact measurements. I did the calculator on Weevolution to figure out what sizes I needed. And so yeah, that turned out so pretty. So the next step on this is just to steam block it, get it a little steamy and yeah, get some wrinkles out <laughs> and then just make the pillow covers. So like I said, the pillows are like 12 by 24, I think. They're just a uh, kind of bolster, bolster like lumbar pillows. And I have two chairs that are a neutral color and so these are just gonna look really, really pretty. I thought they'd be cute for Valentine's Day and I don't really decorate with the season so much just because honestly, I don't have time. <laughs> so um, the kids will really like that though. They always um, really get a lot of joy out of you know being festive and doing holiday things. So um, yeah, I thought that so far this has turned out really cute. I don't know what I'm going to do as far as um, fasteners, not fasteners, closures for the pillows. Um, normally you would have, you know, you'd have a zipper on a pillow and I may just throw some zippers on there because it's not a big deal for me. Um, Y'all know how many project bags I sew. <laughs> in a year and uh, yeah, so zippers, no big deal. So I might just do that. If I have some zippers that uh, are the right size, yeah, it would make them nice and it would just finish off the covers really well and then I could reuse them um, next Valentine's Day, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, this was really fun and it, you know, depending on how this turns out, it will, I guess, validate the reasons why I wanted to get a big loom in the first place. I love my small loom. Um, so I have a Kromsky Presto uh, loom, which is like six inches or 10 inches. And then I have my big Kromsky harp loom, which is 32 inches. And the reason I wanted to get that 32 inch is because I loved weaving with my 10 inch so much but it's just too small to do things like these pillow covers. And so I really wanted to make some more home goods. I love um, weaving things like this, like this woven stole is beautiful on that 32 inch. You can um, warp it in a gradient or um, 
you know, like my advent calendar, I love to dye it in a gradient. And so it's just beautiful, all warped up from days one through 24. And then you can use a tonal or a different, um, you know, single color for weaving. It's just, oh, it's beautiful. So I'm really happy with the looms I've purchased in the past year because it showcases yarn so beautifully. It's really nice. So there's that. And I will give you updates on that, of course. <laughs> Speaking of advent calendars though, I began opening my hedgehog fibers advent calendar this month. And um, for those of you, I guess I just didn't, I don't like to share bad news so much, but my advent calendar was lost for quite a while. And I just got it in probably mid to late January. And so I decided that I was going to open it up every day in February. So if you haven't received yours yet, just a heads up, or if you haven't opened it, um, but I'm sure you've already received yours. <laughs> I was supposed to receive it, you know, before December, but I finally got it and I was super happy, super relieved as well. And we have opened uh, up days one through four so far and it is such a treat every morning all of my kids are so excited to open up the advent and i have told them that whatever age they are they get to open that day and so they're very excited about that <laughs> so here's days one through four so far and they're so beautiful i mean really really beautiful And we have enjoyed opening them and looking at them so much. And so I think what I'm going to do is just wait to decide what project to use them for. I would love to weave something with them. So that definitely is on the table. But since they're, they dyed their advent randomly, it's not in a gradient. And so, so far I have kind of like three days out of four that are very deep and one that's a little more pale. And so I just wanna make sure that, um, you know, I don't have like a lot of pale colors and then a lot of deep colors. And so just make sure that it's a nice random mix, I guess, of shades, but um, I am writing the number on the label so I'll know what day it is and yeah, it's been really, really exciting and I thought that y'all might want to see uh, those days. So it's really fun. It's such a treat uh, opening up beautiful yarn and um, having a little treat for February. That is all that is going on in my world. I have been working a ton with dyeing up your clubs from the, I guess the January, the February pre-orders, because it's February now. <laughs> so I've dyed all those up and I need to wash and dry them today. That's what I'm going to work on doing. And I'm so excited to see how those come out. They are so beautiful and I hope you love them as well. I'm also getting ready for next week's shop update as well. So for those of you who shopped the shop update last Friday, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy everything that you have purchased and I hope it gives you joy during this winter time. I just, I personally love bright colors year round, but there's just something special about having bright, cheerful colors in winter as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked the episode, I'd love if you'd give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And next week, I'll be coming to you again with another episode. And until then, I hope you are doing so well. I hope you are enjoying your crafting and finding a lot of joy in it. And I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.